Well, thank you everyone for coming. Um, I'm Jack Sprague. It's my honor to serve as president of this great institution, Bristol Community College. Uh, it's an exciting event that we have today to announce for you. Uh, we're delighted to hold this press conference and uh, our sustainability efforts at the community colleges about which you will hear in another minute or so. Um, on behalf of the Bristol Community College, I want to also uh, thank our colleagues uh, in learning from uh, Middlesex Community College and Quinn Sigamon Community College, whom you'll meet uh, later today. Let me say we're very grateful to the Department of Energy Resources and also to the Department of Energy and Environmental Affairs uh, for making these awards available to us. Uh, this uh, uh, provides uh, this assistance and support provides us with a great opportunity to reduce our energy consumption and our carbon footprint. You may know that Bristol was one of the first, as other community colleges as well in the state, across the nation uh, to sign up for the uh, President's climate commitment, and we pledged to uh, take certain steps over a period of years uh, to become carbon neutral. It's a challenge, and we're uh, moving ahead, I'm proud to say, on schedule, as is uh, Quinn Sigamond and uh, Middlesex Community Colleges. We're pledged to reduce our energy use, and it's important for us, for the uh, Commonwealth, and also uh, for the nation. I should add also that at Bristol Community College, we, uh, some years ago, we created an institute for sustainability and post-carbon education. And that uh, institute is providing the leadership at the college uh, and leading our efforts in sustainability and uh, what has come to be known as green activity. It is now my honor uh, to introduce to you as we proceed with some of the details uh, and the reason for this press conference, it's my honor to introduce you to the uh, Department of Energy Resources, the Commissioner uh, Mark Sylvia. Mark Sylvia. Commissioner, thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much, President Sprega. It's a pleasure to be here at Bristol Community College uh, for two reasons. Number one, I happen to live in Bristol County, born and raised, live in Fairhaven, so it's a nice commute. Thank you for allowing me to avoid 93 this morning. Uh, but more importantly, in my official capacity as the Commissioner of Energy Resources, I'm pleased to be here today to join my boss, the Secretary of Energy and Environmental Affairs, Rick Sullivan, uh, to celebrate the announcement of three grant awards uh, that we are proud to be providing to three community colleges, including Bristol Community College. The Department of Energy Resources is the chief energy office for the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. And among the things we're responsible for is supporting state facilities and state agencies and their efforts to create a cleaner energy future uh, for the Commonwealth. When Governor Patrick came into office in 2006, he signed an executive order, Executive Order 484, which we refer to as the leading by example executive order. That executive order set some very ambitious goals for state facilities so that the Commonwealth, in working with cities and towns and residents and businesses, could itself lead by example. And so today we're here to announce three grants as part of the Leading by Example program, approximately $713,814 as part of a $2 million initiative that we have to work with state facilities and in particular with uh, community colleges. The goal of the grant program is to fin financially support on-site clean energy projects at state facilities uh, that have difficulty moving forward because of financial challenges that they may, they may have. So this $2 million program is a very exciting program for us to be providing. The first round of this program is what we're here to announce today. And to announce those three awards is the Secretary of Energy and Environmental Affairs, Rick Sullivan, who is the governor's chief cheerleader uh, for everything energy related and environmentally related. He is the general in what's coined as the clean energy revolution here in Massachusetts. He's responsible for implementing the governor's energy and environmental agenda. Please join me in welcoming Rick Sullivan. Thank you, Mark. I'm sorry I left the pom-poms at home today, but I am thrilled to be here at uh, Bristol Community uh, College. And I think it is appropriate that we are here um, celebrating this uh, leading by example program and, and grant award um, at the community colleges. Certainly 
um, under the leadership of Governor Patrick and Lieutenant Governor Murray, the community colleges um, have been a focal point um, uh, and will continue to be in the future um, of Massachusetts, training our future leaders, our future educators, our future workforce, and I think today we celebrate the future um, of our energy use and deployment um, in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Um, Bristol and Middlesex Community College as well as Quinsigamond Community College will join um, some of their sister schools um, in Wachusett, which for example has deployed um, wind and solar and biomass so that they are pushing towards uh, becoming a zero net um, campus. Um, the North Shore Community College, uh, we recently had the great opportunity to dedicate the first zero net energy building in the Commonwealth, the third largest um, building of its kind in the country. Um, all part of the governor and lieutenant governor's vision uh, for the future of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Understanding that we in Massachusetts being at the end of the energy pipeline, not having the natural uh, fossil fuels, or oil, or gas reserves, coal reserves here in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, our most important fuels are first and foremost the ones that we do not use. So energy efficiency has become a key component um, of our energy strategy here in Massachusetts. And in fact, we are leading the country for the second year in a row. We have been uh, declared uh, the, the most energy efficient uh, state in the country by ACEEE. And uh, Mark and his colleagues had the great opportunity to go accept that award uh, by a bigger margin this year. We won that award over the state of California than the year before, so um, I was happy. The governor was even more happy that not only we were first by first by more, so um, not, not that we're a competitive lot at all. Um, and then certainly the other resource that we have is our natural uh, renewable resources, the wind and solar and geothermal and the other parts of the renewable portfolio. And certainly uh, Bristol Community College, Middlesex Community College, and Quinsigamon um, are also leading uh, on that front uh, as well in these awards. And we're trying to drag this out and have a little bit of drama so that when Mark comes back up and we hand out the checks, we haven't given out the dollar amounts yet. Uh, but safe to say we are here because the largest will be coming to uh, Bristol Community College. But to put it in uh, perspective, uh, before the governor took office, there was some 100 kilowatts um, of solar uh, that had been deployed um, in the Commonwealth at its community colleges. Today, there are over four megawatts of solar. There was little over 600 kilowatts of wind energy. Today, there is over 11 megawatts. And this mirrors what's happening uh, in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. The governor challenged us to deploy 250 megawatts of solar by 2017, we are well on our way uh, to meeting that goal. The governor challenged us to deploy 2,000 megawatts of wind by the year 2020, and we are on our way um, to meet that goal. We have become more energy efficient um, as a commonwealth, and we will continue to become more energy efficient as our commonwealth, and your leadership um, will show that as well. And I think what one of the most exciting parts um, of being here today in, in the Leading by Example um, program and coming to the community colleges is yes, we celebrate your energy leadership. We thank you uh, for leading that clean energy revolution here in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, but we are also in the perfect place um, for all of the educators because at the end of the day, that's what the community colleges are and do best to educate the students that come through um, the buildings, the public that comes to the campus, um, and taking that opportunity to teach them um, about the renewable resources that have been deployed, how they work, how they're changing for the better, our energy future, how you were being part of the governor's most aggressive uh, commitment in the Commonwealth to reduce our greenhouse gas emissions by 25% by the year 2020. You were helping to help us meet that goal as well. You were helping the environment at the same time that you were saving money uh, on the campuses across the community colleges across the entire Commonwealth of Massachusetts. So I ask you to continue your leadership and to continue what you do best, which is to have it always be a teaching moment um, for everyone that comes in contact with your campuses um, about just how smart um, our energy future is because of the leadership of the governor, lieutenant governor, and all of you uh, in the community colleges, um, campuses, um, faculty, and administration. I do want to thank, uh, and I know Mark's going to recognize them, um, but I did want to um, 
recognize um, the senator uh, that, it, that is here who, who uh, clearly no, needs no introduction. He has done um, a great job. Senator Rodericks um, is a loud voice, um, not only for this region and his district, um, but also for um, my secretary at Energy and um, Environment, um, as well as Representative Howitt, who has uh, joined us here today. He said it's a little outside of his district, but not that far out of his district, uh, and again, has been a great supporter um, of the clean energy uh, revolution, and I would be remiss if I didn't recognize uh, Senator Menard, once a senator, always a senator, um, and many of the uh, tough votes that were taken uh, back in 2007 and 2008, um, she was there um, supporting um, the Green Communities Act and uh, what we've done here in Massachusetts, leading the country um, in clean, renewable energy and energy efficiency. I want to thank you, all of the elected officials for their partnership uh, and thank everybody here at the community college system uh, for their leadership as well. Uh, and congratulations, and I'm bringing Mark back to help hand out the checks. Thank you very much, Secretary Sullivan. The funding that was provided for these $2 million in grants that we are, are providing, uh, not only in this first phase, but in, in future phases, comes from the alternative compliance payments that we receive through the Renewable Portfolio Standard. And it's important to recognize the Secretary for his efforts. He asked us to go bold in focusing on the dollars that we spend and getting them back into the community. And so uh, we appreciate the Secretary's leadership in providing the funds for these grants that we're here to announce today. And as the Secretary mentioned, um, we wouldn't be here without, we wouldn't have the number one ranking by ACEEE. We wouldn't have these opportunities to provide these grant funds or the Leading by Example program if not for the co cooperative effort and the um, collaboration between the legislature and the Patrick Murray administration. As the Secretary mentioned, back in 2008, there were three very significant pieces of legislation that were passed by the legislature and signed into law by the governor. The Green Communities Act, the Global Warming Solutions Act, and the Green Jobs Act. You need the policies in place, you need the rules in place, in order to create the type of environment that we have here in Massachusetts, where we are number one in energy efficiency, where we have 71,000 clean energy sector jobs, the fastest growing sector in Massachusetts, 11.2% increase in job growth in the clean energy sector in the last year. And it doesn't happen by accident. It's because of the uh, thoughtfulness of our governor and lieutenant governor, the stewardship of our secretary, and the partnership with the legislature. And so, as the Secretary mentioned, we first want to recognize Senator Joe Menard, who was in the Massachusetts State Senate when the Green Communities Act and the Global Warming Solutions Act and the Green Jobs Act were, were passed. Thank you so much, Senator, now Vice President for External Affairs here at the Community College. I now want to uh, recognize and call upon Senator Rodericks. Senator Rodericks was a member of the House of Representatives when the Green Communities Act passed, and he was a champion then. And as Senator, he is a champion now for his district and for all things energy related. So now, Senator Rodericks. Good afternoon. Thank you, Commissioner and Secretary. It's great to see you. And President Sprager, it's always wonderful to be on, on campus here at, at Bristol Community College. I'd also like to recognize Patrick Norton from Congressman McGovern's office and Janet LaBelle from Senator John Kerry's office. Thank you for being here because we have worked closely and collaboratively, as Commissioner Sylvia said, on trying to bring as many opportunities and tools together uh, to ensure that Massachusetts remains number one in the country in renewable energy production. And what a better place uh, to <coughs> award this grant than here at an educational institution because we are also number one in the country when it comes to student achievement uh, in, in education. <clears throat> something that we've all worked very, very hard on that hasn't happened by chance. Certainly under the leadership of Governor Patrick and his team that he's assembled, uh, he is truly committed uh, and has challenged through his executive order, uh, his executive office <clears throat> of energy and environmental affairs uh, to not rest on his laurels and to, be, and to continue to providing opportunities and tools to um, all areas uh, of the Commonwealth in the creation of green in renewable energy. So I'm very, very happy to be here. Congratulate uh, President Sprager and all the other community colleges that received uh, the, the grants today and uh, look forward to continuing to work with you in the future. 
Thank you very much, Senator. I now I'd like to call upon Representative Howitt to say a few words. Representative. I'd like to thank everyone for being here today. I'm a little surprised coming up here. Uh, <laughs> But I, I am very fortunate to have gotten to know BCC, and I'm talking from my position as a state rep, and I've become one of its biggest, I guess, cheerleaders. Uh, listening to President Sabrega talk about the school, talk about all the achievements that the school has had, uh, I'm very privileged to have uh, time here. I have many students from my district that are here, so uh, anytime there's an award or an event, I try and uh, come out of my district. I come as far south as, uh, or east as uh, Swansea, but uh, I consider BCC part of my district, and thank you all. Thank you so much, Representative. I also want to acknowledge uh, those members of the House of Representatives who could not be here today, but who uh, send their congratulations and greetings. Uh, Representative Schmidt, Representative Aguiar, and Representative Sullivan all wish that they could be here and send their regards and congratulations, not only to uh, Bristol Community College, but the other two community colleges, Middlesex and Quinsigamon, for uh, the grant award. I also, uh, at, like the Senator, want to acknowledge Janet LaBelle from Senator Kerry's office and Patrick Norton from Representative Congressman McGovern's office. Uh, they provided some of the funds that were necessary for uh, this wind turbine project to proceed here at uh, Bristol Community College, so thank you both for, for being here. Um, I also want to acknowledge uh, Mayor William Flanagan. Uh, Mayor Flanagan had planned to be here today, but got called out of the city. He wanted us to express to you his congratulations on uh, the award today. I also uh, want to acknowledge uh, Tony Ransom. Tony, where are you? Tony Ransom, right over there from DCAM, uh, Department of Capital Asset Management, which works very closely with the community colleges and the Department of Energy Resources on uh, implementing leading by example initiatives. Uh, thank you very much for being here and for your support. And now I guess as they say, it's the moment you've all been waiting for. Uh, the official presentation of uh, the checks, uh, the grant awards. The first goes to Bristol Community College. Uh, Bristol Community College has been awarded a $600,000 grant to help offset costs for the installation of a 900 kilowatt wind turbine right here on the Fall River campus. The total project cost of this wind turbine is $3.2 million, and the annual reductions are estimated at 1.4 million kilowatt hours of electricity and more than $218,000 in energy costs. That's significant. Big round of applause, that's a big deal. <laughs> the remainder of the project will be funded through the state's Clean Energy Investment Program, which provides low interest bonds for clean energy projects that are then paid for through the energy savings. The project will be overseen by the Department of Capital Asset Management and is expected to start construction later this year. Uh, the Department of Energy Resources also received a letter of support from the mayor in the city of Fall River. So I'd like to call on, on you, President Sprague, to join the secretary, myself, and uh, the senator and the representative to present you with your official check. Excellent, thank you. Well, this is really an exciting day for Bristol Community College, and we're just thrilled about it. It has been a goal of the, of the college to reduce our carbon imprint, to uh, move forward with sustainability efforts. You are right about it. it's over $200,000 uh, uh, savings for us, which also is about a, a quarter, 25% of our total energy output. So it's a significant amount of uh, uh, savings that we will have in our sustainability efforts. I do want to thank Tony for 
uh, his great patient work with DCAM. You don't know this, but there's been a, a long year, more than a year of vetting and careful uh, acoustics uh, uh, research and uh, migratory patterns and wildlife. And uh, it's been a, a long drawn out process uh, to make sure that it was thorough, to make sure that all, uh, all of the uh, uh, considerations were, were resolved. And uh, we're very proud of this. We had a community forum as well. We want to be good neighbors. And we want to demonstrate uh, uh, that uh, Bristol Community College is uh, putting its money where its mission is. And we're modeling uh, just what we preach, and that is sustainability, importance of sustainability. Uh, the uh, uh, hub height of the, of the turbine will be 80 meters. It is not as large or as loud as some of the others that you may have heard about. Uh, we have the complete support of the community uh, in this regard, and I too want to add my thanks to uh, Senator Michael Rodericks and uh, Representative Steve Howitt, to uh, uh, Representative Kevin Aguiar and Michael uh, Sullivan and all, uh, David Sullivan, and also uh, to Representative Patricia Haddad, whose uh, name has not come up, but she was very, very important uh, for us, and Representative Paul Schmidt, and of course Senator Kerry and. Congressman McGovern uh, have been very uh, supportive and instrumental for Bristol Community College. I might say to Representative Howitt, uh, uh, along the lines of political districts, uh, this may not be yours, but uh, anything that has to do with BCC, you've been a great supporter and we cover the waterfront for your district as well. So I'm very grateful. I want to thank uh, uh, Commissioner uh, Sylvia and also uh, Secretary Sullivan uh, for this recognition of some great work. It would take too long to uh, recognize everybody inside the college that participated in this great project, uh, but we're very grateful. Thank you. Thank you very much. I also want to recognize Hope Davis, who's the director of the energy team for DCAM. Uh, we work very closely with Hope and her team on a number of initiatives uh, that DCAM and DOER are working cooperatively on, and thank you so much for being here and for your leadership, Hope. Uh, next, we want to announce the grant award for Middlesex Community College. Uh, Middlesex Community College is receiving a grant of $75,514 to help offset the cost of a ground source heat pump at the trustee's house in Bedford. The total project cost is approximately $308,000, and the remainder of the project cost will be covered by a federal grant. Annual savings are estimated to be over 400,000 kilowatt hours of electricity and $10,000 in annual energy costs. In addition, the project will provide useful information about ground source heat pumps. Uh, for those of you who don't know uh, much about ground source heat pumps, it's a technology that uses relatively, con uh, relatively constant heat from the underground to provide heating and cooling year round much more efficiently than standard furnaces and chillers. Doesn't sound very exciting, but it actually is very exciting. And we're really pleased to have John Lyons here, the Director of Purchasing for Middlesex. Please join uh, Secretary Sullivan and myself to receive your check. You get to go right in the middle. Okay. <laughs> John, would you like to say a few words? Just, 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 just very briefly, uh, on behalf of Middlesex Community College and President Cowan, I'd like to thank the Department of Energy Resources for this award. Thank you. Thank you, John. Short and sweet. <laughs> I also want to recognize uh, Eric Friedman. Eric Friedman is here. Raise your hand, Eric. Eric is a member of the Department of Energy Resources team. He heads up our Leading by Example program and is also the Deputy Director of the Green Communities Division. And I have to say, Eric has been the tireless advocate for community colleges and state facilities. Day in and day out, if he's not sending me an email, knocking on my door, calling me on the phone, uh, passionately advocating on behalf of state facilities, I'd think that there was something wrong. So he's there every day and thank you, Eric, for being here uh, and for all of your effort in this initiative. Finally, we would like to recognize and announce an, a grant award to Quinsigamon Community College of $38,300 for a solar thermal system at the college's administration building in Worcester. The total project cost of this solar thermal system is $52,000.
and the remainder of the project costs will be covered by the college and a grant from the Massachusetts Clean Energy Center. The system will provide approximately 70% of the hot water demand at the college's administration building, which houses a cafeteria, the dental school, and administration offices. Interesting that dental and cafeteria are in the same building. Uh, the system will reduce the campus's energy costs, emissions from greenhouse gas emissions, and the system will be incorporated into the curriculum. At this time, I'd like to introduce Steve Zisk and ask you to join Secretary Sullivan and myself for the presentation. On behalf of uh, Quinsingham Community College and, and, and President Carberry, we'd like to uh, thank uh, Secretary Sullivan and Commissioner Sylvia, and uh, special thanks to uh, Eric Friedman for all the work he's done over the last couple of weeks to, uh, to uh, get this project going forward. Um, on top of what uh, Commissioner uh, spoke about, we're also going to uh, reduce approximately 8,700 pounds of uh, CO emissions, which is going to greatly reduce our, our carbon footprint for the, uh, for the college. And uh, another si exciting aspect of this, because we're sub-metering, is that uh, the staff, the faculty, and, and the students will be able to check online um, throughout the day to see what kind of uh, solar uh, energy that is being produced by the, uh, by the system. And then there'll be a website that they'll be able to check uh, the balance of uh, whatever is being produced and, and the savings right online. So uh, I think it's a good educational tool that we'll be able to implement um, along with savings for a long term for the, uh, for the college. So again, we'd like to thank you, and uh, hopefully this is just the uh, first step in many projects to come. Thank you. Thank you, Steve, and I, I appreciate that last comment because as I close um, <clears throat> this event, um, on behalf of the Department of Energy Resources and the Executive Office of Energy and Environmental Affairs, uh, we applaud the community colleges, as you heard the Secretary talk about earlier, across the Commonwealth. The community colleges have really been leading by example in a number of ways from an energy perspective. We look forward to continuing to support you in your efforts, uh, as we do with cities and towns across the Commonwealth and businesses to help everyone create a cleaner energy future for Massachusetts, because not only does it reduce energy costs and our dependence on foreign oil, but it also provides jobs, creates necessary jobs, and at the same time, it reduces greenhouse gas emissions. So for a whole host of reasons, it's important for us to be doing this. For the community colleges uh, and across the Commonwealth, it's not just for our generation, it's not just for the next generation, but for many generations to come. So we appreciate your leadership. We're proud to be standing here with you to support you in these efforts. And this is not the end, and it's certainly not the beginning, um, but it's a continued partnership that we look forward to cultivate in the future. So thank you all very much for coming and congratulations. <laughs>